Hi guys, today we are making a twist on a retro classic. We are making Black Forest Pavlova. So you're getting all the good bits of a Black Forest Gato, the booze, the chocolate and the cream, but you're infusing that with a meringue stack layer thing. Basically you'll get lovely crispy meringues with a chewy inside. It's gonna be amazing. I'm gonna start off in a freestanding mixer with four large egg whites. And to that, I'm adding in some icing sugar. This is going to whisk on high for 10 minutes until you have a really smooth mixture that has doubled in size and you'll be left with something that kind of looks like shaving foam. After your egg whites and icing sugar have been mixed up, you should be left with this beautiful shaving foam-like mixture. I mean, that is pretty much like shaving foam right there. Um, it should be thick and it should be glossy just like this. So once it is, take it off the mixer, tap out any of that excess just to make sure you get it all. Oh no, I've got some on my shirt. Just get rid of that bit off your shirt and then just tap out the rest. The next stage is to add in your extra ingredients. Now, this mixture is pretty good and you could make meringues out of this. You could also make your pavlova bases, but if you want that crispy shell and that chewy meringue interior, you need two ingredients. I've got some corn flour and I've got a little bit of white wine vinegar. So this goes straight into the mix. So just sift in that corn flour so you have a nice even mixture and you won't get left with any lumps. Fold that in until you have a nice smooth mixture. I'm gonna keep it quite glossy and white. With a Black Forest Gateau, there's all those lovely chocolate shavings. So I'm gonna echo that by adding in a bit of cocoa powder. Now, to do this, you wanna sift in your cocoa powder. And the trick here is if you want those lovely streaks of cocoa powder through your pavlova, is to only mix it ever so slightly. Just give it ever so slight of a mix. Now, the temptation here is to overmix this, but please just step away from your pavlova mixture. Top tip when you're making pavlova, take a little bit of that mixture and just dollop it on the corners of your tin. And now press down your parchment paper on top. And by doing this, you will have essentially the glue that will hold your baking sheet and your parchment paper all in one place, allowing you to spread out your beautiful pavlova bases. So that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. Take half that mixture and just dollop it straight in the center. Bloop. Just like that. And now you can get very creative and just using an offset spatula or the back of any knife will do, just spread that across your baking sheet. Basically, all you're looking for is a nice disc that's going to be the perfect platform for lots of cream, lots of chocolate, and lots of cherry love. Pavlovas are now going into the oven. They're gonna bake off at 150 degrees for 45 minutes until they are crisp on the outside and chewy on the inside. My beautiful pavlova bases have come out of the oven. They've cooled and they're really ridiculously crisp right now. So I'm gonna just set these aside and it's time to talk about the filling. So for this filling, you need a lot of cream. And to that cream, I've added some icing sugar. I've just whipped it up until it's nice and kind of at peak stages. And now we're gonna loosen this out with a little bit of cherry liqueur, or kirsch as it's known. Now that we have our cream good to go, it's time to assemble this pavlova. And this is where you do have to be a little bit careful. And I do have one of my favorite kitchen utensils, which kind of looks like some sort of torture implement. But basically this is a cake lifter and it allows you to lift your layers of pavlova very beautifully. So take that pavlova base very carefully off your parchment paper and then just carefully transfer it onto a little cake stand just like that. I'm gonna dollop on a good generous amount right in the center and then just spread it out to the sides. I'm just adding some nice cherries from a jar which all you've gotta do is plonk these in to give you that wonderful black forest taste and texture in there. And now this is good to go with our second layer of pavlova. I've got my lovely cake slicey thing. Grab this up and just place this carefully on top. Beautifully done. Very nice, it's starting to come together and look fantastic. And now around the sides, I'm gonna decorate with these lovely little cherries with the stalks still in them. But if you don't have them, it's not the end of the world, but they do look quite pretty. 
And now we're going to top it with some toasted hazelnuts just over the top. Oh my goodness, this looks so good right now. So get them sprinkled over the top. And then I have some chocolate curls just to place over the top and make it look very pretty. I did promise you pavlova magic and I think I've delivered. How good does this delicious pavlova look? And now I think it would be rude not to slice into this and try it in front of you. I know you'll be drooling right now as I do this, but please just hold, hold fire guys, hold fire. So I'm gonna I feel wrong just to ruin it, but I think we've got to. Uh, it's going to be hard to eat, but that's fine. I'm giving myself a manageable slice to try here. Got that nice chewy meringue, got the cream. I have died and gone to food porn heaven. That is so good. It's got that nice little boozy kick from the Kirsch in there in the cream but it's all about that chewy pavlova base. And those little hits of cherry, those little hits of chocolate, quite good for Valentine's Day, seeing as it's just around the corner. You can find it on my website. Check it out in the link below. Make sure to leave me a comment telling me how much you love pavlova. And of course, we will see you soon. Happy baking, my friends. Goodbye.